Hey what's up guys, Chris Cover here and today we're taking a look how to create an epic third style explosion as well as a dust shockwave to go along with it using the epic make big films pre-rendered VFX platform. Let's take a look for a short film concept fallout kaboom. How sick was that? Welcome to another Girl Filmmaker tutorial in collaboration with the awesome people from Make Big Films. Tailored made to show you how to pull off epic visual effect shots in an easy, accessible and super fun way. Make sure to check out Make Big Films down from the link in the description. There are a few things to keep in mind about how this kind of effect can take place but also how to make it in an easy way but still achieve a cinematic result you need to keep in mind the following one introduce the effect for just a split second by using a few frames with something obstructing the effect itself like in this case the actress number two make sure to use the compositing techniques we're going to discuss today and keep them in mind while filming as well number three if you want to learn everything about filmmaking and specifically my style, Grail Filmmaker, then make sure to check out my Grail Filmmaker program where I take you step by step on everything filmmaking. For how to make props like this for something like 20 bucks, to how to use any camera from your phone to something like what I use, and to everything else in between, from cinematic color grading to my techniques and hacks, the Gorilla Filmmaker platform is your one-stop show to becoming a Gorilla Filmmaker. And at the end of the day, guys, just to be real, that is what's gonna make the biggest difference. If you want to create projects like these that feel epic and captivating and have that cinematic flair that is not easy to achieve and yet everyone is after, then make sure to check out the program. I will have the link down in the description alongside a 15% discount code GFMR15 for you guys to join me as a guerrilla filmmaker. With that said, let's fire up After Effects and let's get started. So guys, we have two composition, the same explosion happening from two different perspectives. And that is our first composition where the explosion happens behind our actress. And then number two, which we have the whole thing going off and we have some more kind of like advanced compositing techniques we're going to talk about, including the shockwave. So let's get started with the simple stuff, right? Here we have the fire uh, thing happening and the explosion for like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames basically. Now here's what we're going to do about that. There's no need to track because the shot is basically stable, but we need, do need to create a mat uh, to tell the program, hey, I want you to follow this black solid basically and show the explosion uh, everywhere but that so how do you do that you go to layer new solid and i would name it let's say you know matte you make it the same as the composition you can choose either white or black i usually go for black press ok and then you have a black solid in your composition then you go over here down on the left corner and you turn the eye icon off and that's going to basically hide the layer from you then what you do is you go up to your tools and you select your pen tool then you're going to put the resolution to full zoom in here and start tracing what you want your the shape of the solid you want to have basically so you go around the more detail you can be the better but you know don't go full on crazy once you have the shape that you need, then what you do is you press M on the keyboard. So let's say uh, for the tutorial's uh, sake, right? This is our mask. Then we hit M on the keyboard and this brings up the mask that we just did. 
under our layer. Then we hit our keyframe, the clock icon, and that creates a keyframe. Now if we move a little bit forward, and we, we can see that uh, we have a slight movement animation. So what we do is we readjust a few points, right? Uh, a few points from a mask. Let me see what's happening here. Mask, there we go. So we reframe a few of our keyframes because the there's a slight movement like we guys talked about, but it's not crazy. You can see by dragging uh, a rectangle, you can select multiple points at once. And you just move around and you make sure that most of them are where they need to be. I mean, for this example, we just keep like one, two, three, four frames and we adjusted the fourth one, uh, which is very, uh, very good. And we just do this for this duration. And then with our keyframes in place, our mask moves to cover what we need to be in the foreground. Now, there is another technique to uh, do this instead of doing it with masks, and that is with the Rotobrush tool. The way you do this is you click your, um, how do you call this? You click your, your layer and you double click on it, and then you can start painting around what you want. What, what Rotobrush can until select the frame finished rendering. Where I didn't tell you to render, so. Um, so you can select what you want and the program is automatically is going to try to figure out what you want in your shot. But honestly, there's mid path for footage file found for best or better. File. Anyways, doesn't matter. Basically, what I want to say is this sometimes works and other times it doesn't. It really depends on a per case uh, scenario on when something like this works or not. The reason is because sometimes the program can identify your edges very well and sometimes when it comes for example to hair or very intricate details around arms and other places it doesn't really do the job and for something as simple as this right we're talking about seven frames guys here I would just advise you to just have some fun with the pen tool because you can get very accurate results and um, a very professional end result as well. The other cool thing you can do once you have your mask, which I actually already have over here, if we guys take a look, um, the full mask, is that you can hit double M this time, and you bring, uh, if you hit double M, you bring all of the mask properties, and you can see we have something called mask feather. What that does, if I zoom in here again, like 200%, let's say, uh, as you can see I set it up to 2.5. If I set it back to zero, look how harsh the edge of our mask is versus a value like 2.5 really softens it and makes things look that uh, happened like they should as if this was uh, filmed, let's say. And again, it happens so quickly, guys. You don't need to go crazy on the detail. The cool thing with this kind of like technique or method is that we establish some a VFX shot happening like so. And then we cut to the wide uh, to show it happening without the need of rotoscoping with a roto brush or a pen tool or a green screen throughout the whole effect taking place. Now, the last thing that I want to talk to you guys uh, before we jump over to the second um, part of the explosion is the asset itself. Now, this one, again, guys, from the awesome guys from Make Big Films platform is the ultimate dirt explosion number two. Now, when you bring in assets like so, uh, for example, this one, let's just press, let's see, I'm just gonna move it, or oh, use point, yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna move it around just to show you guys what we're working with. Now, a few things that you need to do with assets like these is to one, of course, drag it in and then place it where you want it. And once you place it where you want it, what you do after is you change the track mat, and if you can see this, simply toggle your switch down here, and you tell it, hey, you know this layer? I wanted to follow the matte mask that we created, and that's how you make it being uh, behind whatever mask you created. Now, the other thing to do, though, is two things, actually. This one has a mask itself to uh, feather out the bottom part of the VFX asset. This is how it looks uh, 
from a stock, let's put it that way. And here's what happens when you, we implement a new mask with our pen tool to kind of like replicate the ground effect and then press F on a keyboard to bring up the feather value like we talked about for a matte mask and the feather it out, out with in this example, 25. What that does is it blends it in very, very nicely, guys. And you always need to keep in mind that when it comes specifically to explosions, which is the VFX we take um, a look at today, is to feather any visual effect assets you have, like an explosion, when it comes to the contact point for the ground. The second thing is to simply put some curves and levels adjustment by going to effects, call correction, and selected curves and levels respectively to actually color correct the asset itself to how your footage looks. So as you can see guys here, what we're working with, uh, we have quite a few magentas and reds going on. So by going to the blue channel and pushing the curve down, as you guys can see right here, we actually introduce more yellow, uh, which fits our scene as recorded way, way better. Lastly, we simply do a levels adjustment to really amplify the highlights of the explosion. And there we go. All of this together at one, create this awesome effect. And basically we're good to go. If we preview it really quickly, just to see what we're working with over here, press play. It's going to take a moment. We're missing a few as well. But anyways, that's it, guys. So if I play from here on and on, it's just going to loop. You see what we're working with very quickly, very simple and very cool. The big boy is the side wide angle of the whole thing taking place. So let's talk about this one now. Uh, we have our explosion, just like we had in the other one, guys. We color graded it with a curves adjustment and levels for the contrast. And then we took our pen tool and we drew a mask around the bottom. And then we feathered that so that it links better uh, with our ground. So if I select it and I kind of like moved the mask away, you can see what we're talking about difference wise. Then uh, what we did is we have a second asset. In this case is the dust wave to camera number five. And what this one does, you can see it happening right there, is it creates a big dust shockwave. But the, the thinking behind it actually, guys, is exactly the same. If I go right over here, you can see we have curves adjustment. We have, I'm not sure why everything is doubled here, but let's just go with it because apparently it works. We have curves adjustment, we have hue and saturation, we have levels. And basically all we do is we just spend time with our color grading tools to match the colors and the contrast to our explosion and respectively to our clip in terms of, you, you know, the colors to match and the contrast to match as well. But equally importantly, what we also did is we have a mask for the floor the contact point to the ground, and if I press F, this one is quite high, it's uh, 200. If I put it to something lower, like 50, you can see the transition is not as smooth for something that's meant to be dust. Keep in mind, guys, these values will vary depending on your implementation, but the thinking is the same. So spend some time when it comes to these values to play around and see what fits best with your um, implementation of a dirt explosion visual effect. Now, this is basically it. Same thinking, same application. And of course, in this case, because we're taking the explosion from the side, we don't need to worry about creating a, a foreground, a background separation with something like a matte mask. But what we do need to talk about is a very cool last touch that takes this to the next level. And it has to do with a distortion pulse effect. If I play this really quickly, you guys can see it. And if we go slowly, you can see that there's a distortion starting to happen in the shape of an explosion, basically a circular shape. And as we move on through the keyframes, it expands and expands and expands until we cover a whole composition. How do you do this? 
very simply actually. You go to effects, layer, new adjustment layer, and you name it distortion, like I have down here. Then you create a new solid like we did before. And this one, you make a shape of a circle. Then here's the cool thing, guys. If I hit U, uh, you select double M, like I showed you before, to bring all of the mask properties. And then you have something in the bottom called mask expansion. What that means basically is instead of you going and moving around the actual shape of the mask, you simply redact it by and expand it using mask expansion keyframes. So what we do at the beginning when the explosion occurs, we go over here and we click our keyframe and we set it to something like minus 600, whatever. That is going to make it basically a dot. And then we go about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, about 10 keyframes forward and we expand it to quite a great value, something like 2000. And that means it's going to expand to cover the whole frame. What that does is it takes our effects from a little tiny little circle and expands them to the whole thing, giving the impression of a pulse, distortion, explosion wave occurring. So this is how you tackle the thinking and technique when it comes to the layers and how to make them act the way that we want them. What about the effects? If I hit my distortion adjustment layer that we created, we have two effects taking place, built in within After Effects. One, it's called Radio Blur. And if I go to Effects, Blur and Sharpen, you can see it right here. What you need to do is change the type to Zoom versus Spin, and then select the amount that you want to have, and of course, keyframe that amount from something like zero at the start, to something like 10 when it really the explosion really reaches its high point and they bring it back down to zero once the explosion kind of like calm down and we have the aftermath uh, and that is it the second effect is called turbulent displace and you go to effects distort which is somewhere around here and then you select turbulent displace what this effect does it's, it's actually, actually creating this distortion kind of like effect that you see here by creating micro wobbles throughout the frame, depending on the settings, that basically distort our footage. How you use this one is very simple as well. You go to the amount uh, like we discussed before and you set it to something like 10 at the start. And then you can make it die down if you want to but you don't have to. It depends on how you want to use this, because in this case, our clip gets enveloped by the dust wave, so I don't really need to animate this one. I just won't need to let it play out. But if you want to animate it, simply keep the keyframe on the amount and take it from a high value down to zero to make it stop. But what you need to keep in mind, guys, is the size. The bigger the size, the bigger the distortion map happens, the smaller, the more intricate and kind of like, you know, smaller it gets. And then lastly, the very important final thing is the evolution. If we don't animate the evolution, nothing is going to happen. But by going at the beginning, hitting our keyframe, and then scrolling through all the way to the end, right there, and hitting 5, which means it's going to do 360, five times by that point, which is quite fast if you think about it, this will give us the impression of kind of like a shockwave distortion happening through. So let's take a final look. Okay guys, so that's a wrap for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and of course let me know what you thought of the process down in the comment section below and make sure when you find the time to put it into use. With that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay awesome and creative.